Can you explain how that would be economically sustainable for small businesses? You have 60 seconds. This is an incredible video. This is California Senate candidate. She's a progressive, surprise, surprise, Barbara Lee. And she doesn't think 15 is enough for minimum wage. Not 25, not 30, not 35, not 40. Let her tell you for herself. You're calling for a $50 an hour federal minimum wage. That's seven times the current national minimum wage of $7.25 an hour. Can you explain how that would be economically sustainable for small businesses? You have 60 seconds. First, let me say I um, owned and ran a small business for um, 11 years. I created hundreds of jobs, benefits, retirement benefits, also health care benefits. I know what worker productivity means, and that means that you have to make sure that your employees are taken care of and have a living wage. In the Bay Area, uh, I believe it was the United Way, came out with a report that uh, very recently, $127,000 for a family of four is just barely enough to get by. Another survey very recently, 104000 for a family of one, barely enough to get by low income because of the affordability crisis. And so just do the math. Just do the math. Of course we have national uh, minimum wages that we need to raise to a living wage. You're talking about $20, $25, fine. But I have got to be focused on what California needs and what the affordability factor is when we calculate this wage. I mean, there's so much there that I don't even know where to begin. She knows what worker productivity means, but then she doesn't explain what worker productivity is. She explains something else altogether. Josh, I'm a simple man, so help me with this, and I don't have my calculator in front of me. I'm starting to think that if you just artificially raise the wages that you pay people, that ultimately other people will have to figure out how to make up for those expenses and the cost of goods and services will rise. Am, am I some sort of crazy capitalist, very confused maybe? No, you're not confused at all. And, you know, worse than that, many people will be fired. I mean, here here is the grand irony of the whole minimum wage debate. The idea of the minimum wage first came to prominence about 100 years ago. It first came to prominence in the late 19 teens, really in the 1920s. And here's the kicker, Dave. The people who were first introducing the minimum wage as an economic policy in the workplace were of the Margaret Sanger eugenicist, mm -hmm. anti-black racist variety. It was literally initially imposed as a means to subtly or not so subtly, as the case may be, try to get black employees out of the workplace. This was happening all throughout the Jim Crow South. That was literally the original impetus for minimum wage legislation. Now, look, I, I mean, personally, I mean, I am not necessarily of the school of thought that what is the most economically efficient thing here, there, and everywhere has to be the exact policy of the land. So, for example, the most economically efficient minimum wage, Dave, would be zero dollars. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's crazy to actually tie the minimum wage at least to inflation. To me, that strikes me as not necessarily crazy. But the idea that's $50, $50, I, 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 are you out of your mind? I mean, does she have any idea? what the drop in employment the very next day after this policy went into place. I mean, she probably doesn't because she's never read an economics textbook there. But you just have to be so clueless. And unfortunately, when it comes to Democratic Party politics, you saw what's happening there in the primary running against crazy people like Adam Schiff, the Russiagate hoaxer. I mean, when you're running in this kind of a primary in this kind of a far left district out in California, your former state, Dave, as you very well know, you have to just sound as crazy as possible. And that's what Barbara Lee is doing here. Right. So, James, is is that really what this is all about? That because these people are so disconnected from reality, that there is no number high enough, there is no policy crazy enough. Like, okay, fine, 50, why not 75? Why not 150? Why should anyone make any money? Like, virtually any logical explanation around how the society has operated or could function is counter to everything they believe in. Well, they're not real big on society functioning, so that's true. Um, and your logic is right. If, if 50, why not 75? If 75, why not 150? If 150, why not a million? Why not? There just not be money. And uh, of course, the economics would begin to dictate that over time. Your your analysis when you when you spoke to Josh a moment ago is absolutely right. You're just going to inflate the cost of everything. And so you're like kind of a dog chasing its own tail, or maybe I should say a snake eating its own tail in this mm -hmm. case, not getting anywhere. But the mentality that they're using is incredibly seductive. And that's what's key to focus on here, which is there's a 
they out there with lots of money that they don't want you to have. And mm-hmm. so what we're going to do is just throw money at the problem in an artificial way because that's the real source of the problem. The real problem is that they have money and they don't want you to have it. So there's an us and there's a they, and it's in, in, incredibly important for the us to think of ourselves as a class, as an us, as a revolutionary pol- political force in history to demand that they redistribute what they're keeping from us on some illegitimate terms. And that's the seductive message. It's not that you um, that it's hard to earn a living or that there are these other problems. It's that the real source of the problem is that there are people getting rich, keeping you out of your inheritance or your opportunity and that you have to turn against them.